eta ongi torri prensa urreko netara. Buenas tardes, bienvenidas. Good afternoon, welcome to this press conference. Today we have with us, apart from the cast of the film Proxima, a film which is in the official section from the left to right, we have the presence of Eva Green, the actress, Alice Winnacook, director, Zelie Bunyan Beben, actress and Diria Disnet, and Isabel, Emily Disney and Isabel Madeleine, producers. So please ask, uh, so please ask your questions now. Hi, first of all, I want to congratulate the entire Alice, for your film, uh, uh, it's marvelous, and thank you very much, Eva, for uh, congratulations for your character, Eva. Uh, I want to take advantage of the fact that the film talks about two types of loves, a love which is I would like to, uh, given the fact that the film talks about two types of love, a fraternal love between mother and daughter, mother and a daughter and a love which is more passional or passionate shall we say working with that passion looking for new horizons which is the work of an astronaut i would like to both of you could answer me for it perhaps especially i'm i want to un, uh, eva's opinion eva's opinion what do you understand about with the word love and is, is it a feeling that in the last few years or as of late We've had a feeling which is a bit complex. It's a complex feeling that we've understood and very difficult as well to convey. <laughs> First of all, I just wanted to say that it's really, I'm super happy to be here and it, it seems really like the day of the launch because um, real astronauts before leaving Earth have exactly the same press conference like this. So I feel we are back in the movie. But um, to answer your question, it was about love, I think. A love between mother and daughter. And uh, yes, it's, um, it was really what I wanted to talk about. You know, this, uh, this complex relationship. And um, of course, uh, it's uh, in this world bigger than life, this world of space. And um, yes, I wanted to, to, to talk about this idea of separation, but also uh, this feeling of guilt, uh, um, how to overcome, how to deal with it. And uh, to me, this idea of, a, of an astronaut, uh, I had al always in mind this idea of a woman from whom, uh, from whom stakes of uh, separating with uh, with the, her daughter could resonate with the stake of separation with uh, the earth. So yes, I think it's, um, it's really about this complex relationship. I'm so sorry, but I, I didn't really understand the question. It was, I was, I was struggling yeah. to, with the, I, it's about love. It's all about yeah. love all the time. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, it's, I think what we, we wanted to talk about a mother and a superheroine, you know, because uh, normally those two things, uh, they don't coexist in the same person, you know. Superheroines have no children. And uh, that's why I wanted to work also with Eva, that she's, she was to me like a, a kind of warrior. <laughs> and, uh, and I thought it, it was great to have her in a movie like this uh, to, to, be, to have this warrior being a mother at the same time. It was not the question, but it's about the movie. <laughs> um, I don't know, I mean, it's, you know, uh, at the beginning, the, my character and, and Stella uh, are, you know, are very anxious about being separated from each other for so long and so far away and and by the end, you know, you, they both realize that it is, it is love, uh, like an, an invisible link, you know, that allows us to, to accept separation, no matter how far away from, you know, we are. And it's just, it's a very pure, pure movie, yeah. Yeah, it, it's, uh, it was really uh, the idea of a story of liberation, that so she liberates from her guilt and she uh, fulfill her dream. 
and the, uh, the little girl accepted it in the end. It's a happy ending, <laughs> in case you missed it. <laughs> Hello. Hi. I'm here. Yeah. So from a directing and acting perspective, how do you guys develop the relationship between the mother and the daughter? Because it's really believable. So how do you work on that? She, she uh, made us rehearse uh, a lot, which is wonderful because, you know, when, it's very rare when we can uh, have the luxury to have the time to rehearse. And I know that, you know, Alice really wanted us to be quite credible. So we spent some time together. I have to say that I was, at the very beginning, I was a bit intimidated by this beautiful little actress there because there's something very mature about her. She's like a, an old soul in a, in a seven-year-old body. Uh, but she's, you know, there's a depth to her. There, she's very raw and um, she's just, you know, in, just magnificent, so big bravo. And also, uh, and I was, I, I really. Yeah, I, I think I, I wanted to, I, t I thought it was great also to have Eva as not the Mater Dolorosa, you know, the, the, the mother you show usually in films, because I think you can be like, there, there is many different kind of mothers. And uh, I think it's like Matt Dillon who says in the movie to me the sentence of the film, which is, there is no such thing as the perfect mother. This perfect mother, she doesn't exist. And I thought it was great that Eva is not a mother herself. So she's more like, to me, she was like an Amazon. Or, and, uh, and to imagine her with a little girl uh, of uh, eight years old. And um, I think it's, um, yes, I wanted to, to talk about those mothers that, um, because uh, super heroines, you know, in films that don't have children. Uh, like, uh, for example, Catwoman, she has no children, and you don't show um, those children to, because they, probably because they would divert them from their mission. But in real life, those women have children. <laughs> and, um, and most of the time, those women, they do most of the job. You know, even things are changing, they assume, um, they feel responsible for them. And so, um, but I think the reason why films don't uh, talk about it is because in real life, those women don't talk about it because they feel ashamed or they have this feeling of guilt uh, because, uh, of course, this world of space is like bigger than life, but uh, in real life, in companies, in, uh, at work, women know that uh, if they say they have children, that uh, it's gonna, they, 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 it will be considered as a weakness, you know? It will mean you will not be focused, that you are not going to do a good job, that you're gonna leave earlier, and so on and so on. So I think they don't talk about it, and they, um, uh, they feel ashamed. And there was this trainer at the European Space Agency who told me she was training um, men and women, and men kept talking about their children while women didn't. And there was this, this girl, uh, she has trained for six months with her, and at the very end she learned she had children and no one knew about it. So I think this really, it's what we said, this film is really a story of liberation. I think it's time that um, we, t we, that movie talk about this, um, this uh, thing of having children and those things related to women that are, uh, that are still, still like shameful. Hola. Hola. Hi. Hi, good morning. A question for the director and another one for Evergreen. I would like to know, a question for Evergreen and the director. I would like to know when you had the idea of writing the script, whether you had contact with, with any of the mothers that we see the photographs at the end of the credits of the film, and whether, where did the inspiration come from? That, and ever, the training that you had to go through for the film, whether you did go through any training sessions to see what we see and is reflected on the screen. Thank you. Uh, 
Um, so, yeah, um, Alice wanted me to have a bit like broader shoulders uh, because, you know, you have to be able to put the suit on and astronauts need to have strong shoulders. So I worked a bit on my shoulders, but also on my whole body with a wonderful trainer. Uh, and, you know, this whole world was completely unknown to me and Alice uh, gave me some books to read, some documentaries. Um, uh, we went to the European um, Space Agency a few times. Where I practiced a couple of times in the in the Soyuz, in the, the yeah. simulator. Uh, <laughs> and uh, all the trainers. That what was funny about it is that the trainers were real trainers for, for the European Space Agency, and they didn't give a shit that it was Eva Green. So they were really rude with her. Like, come on, go on. Like, be. They were really tough on her. And no, that's really what is uh, particular about our film. I think is that we really immersed, you know, in this world of astronauts. That we uh, we were really shooting in the real training centers where real astronauts are training and for the first time because those places are military places you know it's military bases there is checkpoints to get there it's a very very and we were really uh, uh, living with those astronauts in prophylactorium the the, the bedroom of Eva in the film is not like a recreated set, and I haven't chosen the sheets, you know, of the beds. That's, it's really a weird place. You don't have this image, of course, of uh, this astronaut world because we are used to those astronaut films where uh, astronauts are superhumans, and in it's a world where everything is easy. It's easy to leave the Earth. It's very, everything is so simple. But in real life, it's really hard to leave the Earth. And we were living with those astronauts, and while we were shooting, you remember there was a Luca um, Parmitano, who is now in space at this moment, but uh, at that time he was training in Star City, and uh, he was in love with Eva. He was so thrilled that we were in the same corridor. <laughs> but uh, yes, we were basically, we have been living with, really with those astronauts. Thomas Pesquet, who is a very fr famous French astronaut, was uh, really our Godfather. <laughs> he was like uh, helping us to, to uh, also Claude Yenier. Uh, I have been talking to, with, with uh, so many women astronauts, uh, writing also with trainers. So basically everything that you see in the film is real. And even if it sometimes it seems really like, um, I don't know, like that's I think what is moving to me is to see how fragile it is and, and everything is so old and, and it's not what you are. Uh, but even American, American astronauts, they also are training in Star City. You know, in Houston, they have bigger pools, but when it's time to leave the Earth, they go to, um, they go to um, Star City to learn uh, the protocol of Soyuz, what Eva has learned with this. Uh, with those very uh, hard trainers. And, uh, and also we have shot also in the real place where, where uh, uh, rockets are on the, the launch pad in Kazakhstan. It's really something really moving to be there at the very, at the place where you leave the earth, you know? It's not something like that, it's really, so I think it's, it was very also, it was hard and I was really, I admired Eva for her courage. I mean, she put herself in danger a lot of time physically, but also, yes, it, it was very, a very hard training and she was very courageous. And, uh, but at the same time, it was really strong to be on those real places. It was really uh, inspiring. And I mean, I, I really realized um, how demanding uh, the job of an astronaut is, how much intellect, how much culture, physical perfection is required. I mean, it's true, they are like, you know, superheroes. They will go, you know, beyond the limits just for science. There's a kind of, I mean, they're kind of like masochistic, like big time actually, <laughs> but it's all for a greater good. And yeah. there is a sense of sacrifice that is actually you know, beautiful. And, and to me, they were really like Greek gods, you know, with superpowers, but at the same time, really human flows you can connect with. And I think that's what I wanted to show in the film, because it's the paradox in the film, this 
uh, the, the, the paradox of the astronaut is that they are superhuman and also going to space is an experience of fragility and vulnerability, an experience of your own fragility because again, our bodies are, are made to live on Earth. You know, conditions in space are, are really hard. You know, you, it's really, it hurts physically like uh, you, you, you lose your sense of balance, your, 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 your body, your, grow, your cells grow older, your body grows like for th from three to four inches and it's terrible pain, all of that yeah. stuff. And, and so in a way, astronauts are kind of mutants. You know, I think I, I wanted to form this uh, mutation uh, because she became she becomes a, a space person. And, and on this, at the same time, you know, when you become a space person, you realize how you are attached to the Earth. You know, that because it's also, it's more a film about Earth than a space movie, I think. It's kind of celebration of the Earth, you know? All of those small details you don't pay attention to, like, a, I don't know, like uh, like uh, the sound of birds and the wind in the trees, all of that stuff. It's something you miss in space. Mm -hmm. Hello. Uh, hello. Congratulations about the movie. Uh, second, excuse my, my English. And third, I have a question, so question for Miss Green. It's about when do you feel... Uh, Sorry. Ah. <laughs> here, here. Uh, when do you feel when I have to, to make the movie? Yes, uh, when you send, if uh, if uh, when you read the script later first. Uh, thank you. Well, I was on the Eurostar. I read the script. I loved it. My heart was beating super fast, and it was like, oh my god, I I, I want to meet Alice. I met her the next day. And I just wanted to be part of this adventure. It was very easy and obvious. That's it. Yeah, it, it, I was, it was really an, a very strong experience. I really had this, I, it was really like we were like two warriors in, in the middle of nowhere, you know, in this Kazakhstan. And so it was like, yeah, yeah a very strong experience. Hello, congratulations on the film. Um, I have a question for all of you and then one question for Eva. Uh, in this film, all the characters, they have to sacrifice a little something of themselves. Should I ask what's the biggest sacrifice you have ever done for art? That's a question for everybody. And Eva, you have to speak at least two languages in this film. Um, how is transferring from one language to the other? Because each language, you know, it has a different rhythm. And I don't know if you have ever also heard your voice in a different language dubbed, I mean. Thank you so much. How many questions? Uh, okay. The language. The languages. Uh, I don't. I mean, I am French, 100%. My my dad is Swedish, but I don't speak a word of Swedish, which is a big shame. Uh, but I I love languages. I love uh, I love work. I'm a kind of a geek, so I love you know. I had a, to learn a bit of Russian as well, and um, I, it kind of helps you just to get out of yourself as well sometimes. And, and here it was very kind of precious because for me, Russian is the language of the astronauts. So I, I worked hard and it was just, it's fun. Um, yeah, but yeah. The, I think the harder for her was to speak English with a French accent. <laughs> because uh, I, I told her, you're French, it's very important that the, we have uh, this French astronaut, so you really have to rehearse because French people speak so bad English. So I think it was well, like very, very hard. And also she has trained again very hard with the Russians, the trainers, and uh, also with, because it's also protocols and stuff. She, she's a real astronaut. I can't get on a centrifuge. <laughs> I think it would, wouldn't go well. <laughs> uh, and what about the first part of the question? Can you... Uh, about the sacrifices that you have ever done, either for art or in your life in general. It's a Personally? question for everybody. Uh, it's a question for everybody. Everybody, so me or... I don't know. Yes, yeah, of course. A sacrifice for work. I mean, I don't know. Yes, I think every, everyone makes sacrifice. 
I, I think I could relate really to this story because I'm myself a mother and I have a 10 years old daughter. So I think maybe you can imagine that maybe for a space is like um, cinema is like space, even if we are still on Earth, but sometimes you feel you're in space, maybe, uh, like space persons. I think it was also something very moving about the, the shooting. It was uh, to live with those astronauts in that world, is that there are many connections. We felt really connected because, yes, there is also something very moving to me is that uh, making a film is also uh, uh, something, you know, we are so many, it's a group, you know, working all together. And uh, we had like a German producers, like a uh, German crew, Russian crew, uh, French crew, in Kazakhstan too, there were so many people. And it's the same thing in uh, space, you know, you, you, you see only the astronauts, like in cinema, sometimes actors. But there are like so many people, like the mission controls and all the team on the ground working to make this dream possible. So I, will, I feel like all this collective uh, work and energy is really um, something really moving to me. And, uh, and especially in the world of space, it's also all the, the countries together, you know, Russians and Americans and uh, and Japanese, and uh, all uh, together in the International Space Station. And, um, yeah. Time for one final question. A question for Zeli. Zeli, I think it's your first film. This type of adventure, did you like this adventure? Would you want to keep, keep making films after this film? After this adventure? Yes, I want to continue uh, making films. I loved, I loved it. That's all I wanted to say. Cuando le conocí a Celie, fue, lo voy a decir en francés porque lo entienda ella mejor. When I met uh, Julie, Zeli, I think it was the second person who I interviewed in the audition, the second person. When I saw her, I fell in love with her. And it reminded me of the, the girl I was. I wanted to have someone who was, looked like my daughter or to be the daughter of the astronaut and immediately made me think about myself when I was a, a little girl. And what I saw in her immediately something, something special. And then when we started to work every weekend with Eva, she also traveled with us, Zeli. She was also in Kazakhstan and she visited all of those places with us, which are not precisely places for children. And Zeli has also been a little astronaut as well. Thank you very much. We have to stop now. Thank you.